Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name is Stan, and today we're going to go through a. Uh, we need to rebearing this fan. This uh, uh, there's a fire in the building, and uh, we just want to check and make sure it didn't melt the grease out of the bearings. This this, this fan saw some extreme temperatures. Um, it didn't even get hot enough to burn the paint off the off the blower housing, but we still know it. Uh, uh, we know it saw some heat. So we want to make sure that this thing's going to live. Uh, we're going to put this fan back into service, and it's been in service for six or eight years, and we want to make sure it's going to go for six or eight more. Um, this is a Hartzell vane axle blower, and uh, if you can see behind this prop, uh, behind this propeller, there's a series of veins that essentially corrects the uh, tornado that happens inside the ductwork. So it gets a very laminar airflow down the duct. Um, now for a 30 inch diameter fan, which that's what this is, for a 30 inch diameter fan to move 17,000 CFM of air, um, that's what needs to be done to correct the uh, screw inside the duct, is to move it in a laminar fashion. Um, this unit has a 15 horse motor. Um, the motor base is sitting down against my table. The motor's already been removed and uh, that's getting replaced. <clears throat> but uh, we're going to go through the, uh, the bushings and you know, I'm going to show you how the wedge mated connections go together. I'm going to show you how to line up the shaft and I'm going to show you how to set the bearings um, in this thing. So uh, let's get started and uh, let's, get the, let's get the blower wheel off first. Okay, at first glance, uh, they've got a very unique arrangement. They're using a center bolt in the shaft, so the shaft is center drilled, but they're using this triangular plate rotated up against the flats on these three bolts, which makes for a nice uh, locking mechanism. Um, anyways, we're going to get the center bolt out first, and, uh, and then we're going to drive the bushing off, and I'll show you how to do that. And just better safe than sorry, we're going to use the official uh, juice of uh, Bar Z, which is a good old PV blaster. And uh, I'm just going to put a dab of it. And, in, in these two drive holes here, uh, there's really nothing else to do right now as far as penetrant goes, but we're going to get uh, get this center bolt out. Okay, watch your ears. That was easy enough. And I can still see Cosmoline on this. It didn't even burn the Cosmoline off of, uh, off of this center, so pretty good. And this is just stuck down with some Cosmo. And there you have your center shaft and the triangular plate that they, they just put it on and then clock it into the flats of those on the, on the bushing. All right, so that's uh, pretty simple. No signs of heat here. I mean, like I said, I'm still seeing some Cosmoline around that bushing from actually when it was packed at the factory. I'm just gonna give a little bit of blast around the edge of that shaft, but it's not gonna be I don't think it's, we're going to even need it. All right, we're going to pop these three bolts out here. And in a, in a wedge-mated connection like this, the bushing is clearanced here, but then the fan hub in the back is actually threaded. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to separate the bushing and the fan. And we're going to do that by these and use these as like a jacking bolt. And we're just going to put some pressure to drive those two apart. Now, uh, I've had, I'm about 50-50 on, on that uh, over my lifetime. Sometimes it'll break the bushing, snap a corner of the bushing off if you get carried away. I always wish they would give me a third threaded hole here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drive these two in and uh, probably take a brass punch and give the, give the uh, blower a smack trying to get, get them separated while there's some pressure on it. Um, if, if it still doesn't come loose, uh, I'll actually sometimes drill and tap a third hole here so we, we push on it equally in three spots. But uh, let's flip our impact uh, over here and uh, run it in and see if we can separate. All right, I'm putting a little pressure on that one. That's separated 
pretty nicely. <coughs> So we can get that bushing off. And what's going to happen is the fan's going to drop as soon as that bushing pops out and drop down to the housing. All right. So there's your wedge made connection. You can see the taper. And then you can see the split. See, it's split down two sides to allow the crush. It's keyed. So this gets keyed. Um, Inside the inside the fan hub, and it's also keyed to the shaft. <clears throat> but that's the anatomy of a wedge mated connection. All right, let's get that out of here. And I'm hoping I can get this blower wheel off. This is about a forty or fifty pound blower wheel. I'm hoping I can get it off uh, without bumping the camera. Let me get my ho air hose out of the way. <clears throat> These are an incredibly tight fit. They run a, a very tight uh, clearance to the edges of the housing. So you gotta pull it out very, very square. Okay, so there's our blower wheel. And there we can see, there's some mayhem going on in there. Okay, let me get, uh, let me get this out of the way and we'll give that a closer look. Okay, and at some point, uh, someone launched a belt, the belt is inside of a tube on the other end, on the other bearing side. And somebody launched a belt at some point. And you can see it fell down and got wrapped up around the fan and shaft and everything. And here are fragments of an old drive belt. That was the old cog type drive belt, the one with the, with the notches in them. So interesting. And uh, I bet that thing was making a hell of a racket right there. But you can see, uh, not much left of that belt, but I bet it sure made a hell of a lot of noise when it finally cut loose. And there's a belt part number right there. <laughs> Funny. Okay, uh, next step. Um, well, the, we've got grease around the bearing. The 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 fan didn't, uh, or the fire didn't melt the grease out of the bearing, so we're in pretty good shape there. All our welds look good. We're inspecting the housing as well while we're here. Uh, we're checking the welds for cracks and things like that and anything that needs to be repaired. Um, the next step is, before we take this shaft out, we want to prepare for installing, you know, the new bearings. And the way we align this, is, see this is on a four bolt pillow block and they leave a bunch of slop on these holes. So this is capable of being moved around. Uh, we want to make a, we're going to make a rod. It's just going to be a simple quarter inch rod to measure from the housing to the shaft. Uh, four different ways so that when we reinstall we can center this shaft perfectly and our fan goes on and we don't have to worry about rubbing uh, you know rubbing the, the tips of the fan blade around the edges and it's was set up very close if you look over here I'm gonna pull you guys over here from here to here you can actually see where it was just slightly rubbing and just keeping the paint clean not even uh, you know, not even scratching it down to the metal, but it was uh, incredibly close. You couldn't even get a piece of paper in between there. So something spinning at that kind of RPM with that kind of uh, with that kind of clearance always makes me nervous. All right, but let's uh, let's get our rod made. Uh, what I'm going to do is it's going to be a quarter inch rod, just a piece of soft rod. I'm going to thread one end and uh, put a put a coupling nut on it, and then use a uh, uh, just a regular bolt as an adjuster so I can adjust the rod slightly and get it to fit uh, properly all the way around so we can center up our unit. All right, but uh, that's next. Okay, so we got our adjuster rod made as a, in a strange turn of events. I didn't have uh, any quarter inch rod, so I had to make it out of three eighths. Anyways, uh, three eighths all thread, a couple of nuts, a coupling, and just a plain bolt so we can, <clears throat> we can adjust it slightly. And what we're going to use this for... <clears throat> is a tool uh, and basically just when we reassemble we're going to put it in between the shaft and the housing at the four different positions to make sure our shaft is centered and I can see right now see I can't get my rod in here and up here is where we're rubbing and uh, no way is it going in there so right now this, this bearing is actually knocked out uh, knocked out of center so uh, we're going to use this when we, re when we reinstall 
Uh, but now we can go ahead and break down this bearing. And uh, well, typically what we'll do is we'll get these four bolts loose um, and, and just pull this bearing off this side. And then we'll flip and repeat on the other side. The other side is the drive end uh, where, the, where the shiv is for the belts. And uh, the other bearing is on the other end. But we'll get this all, uh, all torn down and uh, get to work on getting this uh, bearing side out. Okay, we got a couple things to do before we can pull the bearing. And uh, first of all, it's, it's a, there's a tube over here. So there's a hose right here. And uh, it's just some um, black poly tubing. And it's got an external grease setup. And they've got uh, grease zerks here. You can see where the customers actually uh, uh, grease those things externally, which is a nice feature, you know. Uh, you can grease them from a distance. You don't have to tear down to grease, which would be horrible, but I've seen manufacturers do it. So uh, we need to pull the grease tube off. We need to release the set screws, and then we can pull the main, uh, um, main bolts off of the bearing. <coughs> And first impressions on this, when I, when I spin the shaft, she sounds a little growly. She's not uh, sounding great. So we're gonna, just going to pop this guy off of here. And there's your grease hose. And then we're going to get... Uh, we're going to find which Allen wrench we need here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're right here. Nope. tight. Ah, there it goes. There it goes. All right, so that one's loose. Come over here. And there's two types of collars on these things. This is just a set screw type. They make another one called an eccentric locking collar which is always interesting and they have to be driven on not with just a spanner wrench you have to actually take a punch and drive them in the opposite direction of fan rotation and what that is it's a locking collar similar to <clears throat> similar to a wedge mated and there's two collars and the top one's eccentric and the bottom one's concentric and when you when you drive them around they lock down on the collar and uh, so those are those are pretty interesting Okay, uh, set screws are loose, uh, grease hose is off, let's, uh, let's put some impact on those big boys and pull that bearing off. Alright, watch your ears. So they're using oversized nuts. This is just half inch hardware, but that nut is oversized. Uh, and they're using serrated washers. They use the locking type externals on the head side of the bolt, which is kind of interesting to me. And then in conjunction with a nylock. Okay, three more.
All right, you can probably see the way that shaft dropped down when I did that. That'll give you an idea how much play and movement you've got in there on the on the four bolts uh, to adjust that uh, center, and that's why we made that rod and did what we did and wasted that time ahead of time so this thing goes back together easier later. Uh, over the years, I've learned not to screw myself. All right, uh, let's get some, this shaft is pretty rusty. Uh, before we even attempt to pull that, slide that bearing off, I'm gonna take some emery paper to it and clean the shaft. Uh, and then we're gonna PB blaster it. Um, after I get that bearing on the move, I want it to just come off by hand. So uh, the only thing we really have to get past are the dimples uh, from the set screws. But uh, let me get some memory paper on that and get that cleaned up. clean flat just black the surface is just black I don't see any burrs or anything uh, let's get it cleaned up and we're just gonna give it a quick wipe down with a shop towel put an eyeball on it All right, it looks pretty good, pretty flat. Nothing really jumps out at me as a, as a burr or anything that would stop me on the way out. There's a couple nicks right there, but I got those with the emery paper. All right, let's get some PB blaster in there and then we'll work on getting that bearing pulled back. Okay, we've gone as far on this side as we're gonna go. Uh, there's no, I couldn't get the bearing to pull pull back a little bit. Sometimes you slip a couple wedges in behind it and just tap them in and it pushes the bearing out far enough to get a two jaw puller under the bearing and make the pull. But uh, I couldn't get it to budge. So uh, we've got some slack in there. Let's go around to the other side, release the other one and at least release the, uh, the set screws on the other one just so I can get it to slide away and uh, get some get some slack in there so I can get a bearing puller on it and yank this bearing off. But uh, let's go over to the other side, uh, the drive side, and uh, and um, pull that okay, apart. Okay, this is the this is the belt uh, drive side <clears throat> or driven side. The drive is out at the motor end, and uh, through this tube right here, there's a, this is where your belts run, and then behind this plate, there's going to be a shiv uh, where the where you can access the belts. And this side of the belt, they give you this nice cover plate where you're in the duct. There's usually a door in the duct where you can climb through the door, pop this plate off, and get to the drive belts to be able to, you know, get them mounted. There's a quad belt, so there's four drive belts. But they give you this uh, with these massive uh, bolts. You know, wow, I'm probably going to need to put some real, real grunt on those to get those off, huh? And I'm using an impact because it's here. Just quarter twenties. If I had an air ratchet or a little three eighths impact, I'd be using that. But believe me, if one of these bolts is stuck, I'm not even gonna feel it. It's just gonna snap right off. And there we have it. And let's see what kind of fun's in here. Okay, there you have the, the, the driven side. Uh, much the same as the other side, except we don't have a propeller here. All we've got is a shiv, uh, again with a wedge-mated connection bushing, and we need to get the, uh, the 
the shiv and the and the bushing separated get the shiv off and then we can work on the bearing there in the back okay well it turns out i did have to change tools i had to go get an air ratchet uh, i needed a thin wall socket to get in next to that shaft uh right there and the big uh, the big impact sockets weren't gonna make it so how cooperative this is going to be. Not terrible. So far so good. Two for three. Two for three. We are three for three. All right, next thing is a little cleaning right here. I'm gonna start with a wire brush. Cause that is, uh, got a bunch of belt dust and stuff on it. All right. And this is an outdoor unit, so pretty much exposed to all the elements. All right, uh, let me get a little emery. I'm gonna put a little bit of emery paper around that before I drive them apart. Uh, the shiv is just gonna fall down and fall away. The, the shaft, I got probably eight inches between the bottom of the shiv and the, and the actual bearing. So the shivs are just gonna fall away. And then the bushing, that's another story, whether it's gonna come off by itself or whether we need to put a gear puller on it. Get a little emery paper on it here. All right, that's not terrible. And then we'll get a little PB blaster on there. Pardon my head. Thing you say about this stuff, no straw required because it puts out, it just fires out a stream, but not hyper accurate on your aiming. And the good Lord help you if you get that turned around this way and blast yourself in the face with it. I've had just a mist get in my eyes and it burns like a son of a, it burns. But uh, wear glasses if you're doing it. Even the simplest tasks will hurt your eyes. Okay, we got PB on it. We can put our jacking bolts in and try to get that uh, that little bushing separated from the shiv. Need a little more PB on those holes there. Make sure those bolts are running good. Flip the ratchet over. And here we go. That wasn't cooperating at all. Let's do this one. Nope. I need to chase those threads. Those two threaded holes here and here, pull you in a little closer. Uh, these two threaded holes here just sit there. They're there for uh, to, to as a jacking bolt um, to be able to separate the bushing. They just sit there, loading up with rust. So they're they're pretty rusty. I'm gonna clean them out before I uh, try to run a bolt in there. All right, let me uh, let me go grab a tap. Okay, I got a quick little tap set up here. Oh yeah, I'm getting all kinds of crunchies out of there. Was, the hole feels terrible. All right. clean and for these kind of operations don't use your good taps you know uh, rust and, uh, and the structure of rust is very hard and it'll just ruin your taps uh, use your thread chasing repair type taps use your for stuff like this use your use your cruddiest ones you're not actually cutting away any material all you're doing is removing some rust 
and uh, dressing up the threads a little bit. So uh, don't use your good machine caps for this. Don't use a the gun type or any of that other stuff. Just use a just use a nice thread chaser. All right, our holes are clean. Let's take a look at our, take a look at our bolts. Our bolts are looking pretty good. We should uh, be able to run those in without any problems now. And exert the pressure on the on the bolt where it needs to go. The idea is not to put torque on the bolt trying to fight a bad thread. We want to put the torque on the bolt and drive the part off. You know, uh, let's let's apply the force in the direction we want to apply. Okay, here we go. There we hit bottom that time. Operation. There it is. Now there's a few ways we could we could get on this. Uh, we could just you know put a dimple in the center of the shaft, put a nice heavy center punch mark in the middle of the shaft some, for our uh, for our gear puller to grab, grab it with a three jaw and just yank it off. Um, you can use the jacking bolts by putting longer jacking bolts in and put a plate in back here and use the jacking bolts to actually push the bushing off, which quite often no one has any 5 16 threaded rod laying down. These are 5 16 uh, coarse thread. So uh, I'm going to choose the three jaw method. We're going to yank that off with a three jaw. We're going to put a nice heavy center punch mark in the middle of it just to get a, um, you know, just to get a center point. And somewhere for the uh, for the little dimple of the uh, three jaw to yeah, get a hold of. Goes around to the other side a little bit. All right, uh, we tried all the usual tricks uh, to get this off without using a gear puller, but you know I don't waste a lot of time on it. As soon as you get a gear puller on it, I think it's just gonna come flying off of there. We clean the shaft, we release the set screw, we've separated the bushing from the pulley, um, but now we need a dimple in the middle uh, in order to set up a gear puller. We're just gonna use a uh, quick center find here. To uh, to make our mark. So and, and uh, we're just gonna start off with a little tiny. Oh man, you guys I put you the camera right in my way. Okay, so we're going to start off with just a little little tiny mark on there. Just kind of feeling your way in. All right. Now we're going to follow up with a nice fat one. place for our gear puller to at least line up. And out on the out on the tip of this thing, see we got a there's a point right out on the tip and that's what we're lining up with that center punch mark. That ensures us that we're not going to slip. Some of them some of the gear pullers have a little swivel foot. I actually prefer uh, this type so and we're hooked on the top. Let's see if I can even up here on the bottom. And with your third hand, all right, we're engaged on three. Oh, it's coming off without even any impact. I can feel it pulling right now. All right, let me hold that together. It's that that uh, that setup's gonna want to fly apart. All right, let's do this. 
I think they're gonna come off of there awfully fast. You ready? Here we go. And off. There goes the key. All right, bushing gone. How was that? And this was a very unusual bushing. Here, let me grab that key. <clears throat> This is a low clearance type bushing. If you see how paper thin that thing is, and you can see they had to cut um, cut the entire bushing out of it. Then they use they actually use an oversized keyway. See that keyway is or that key is rectangular, so it pins uh, the shaft. It grabs the shaft, the bushing, and the shiv all at once with with one key all the way through. So that when they when they run these small diameter sheaves. They have to run this adapter type uh, bushing. They call that a special. Uh, Browning uh, uses them. I'm sure other drive companies do as well. Okay, we're into the bearing now finally. So let's, uh, let's cut loose that collar and drive that shaft out a little bit and give us some room on the other end to get, uh, get that bearing out. Okay, we're back and we've got, uh, we've got the bushing off. We've got the shiv off. And uh, we, we went ahead and cleaned the shaft. And I, I went ahead and removed the locking collar. Now you probably noticed that this bearing is different from the uh, from the fan side. This is the drive side. This is the one with the belts. Uh, this bearing assembly is a double row, and the reason they run it there is because of the side load of the belts. You know the belts are pulling sideways on the shafts. So they run a slightly heavy duty heavy dutier. Is that even a word? Heavy dutier. A slightly heavier bearing. Uh, on, on the uh, on the belt drive side, so uh, this one has a little different locking device. It's got uh, two set screws, 90 degrees apart, and then in the inner collar, there's two holes in there, and those holes go all the way through the shaft, pinches down on the shaft. So we've cleaned the shaft. What we want to do now is we want to leave the bearing bolted in. But we want to send the shaft that way enough where we can get a gear puller in behind the opposite bearing and pull it back. Okay, we're, <clears throat> we're gonna do an old trick here. Uh, we've got four through bolts, and I was I wanted to get enough room behind these uh, the bearing where I can get a puller on it, but you can see the jaw on my puller, it's about that big. And we've got a little bit of a slot there, um, but not, not enough to get a gear puller in. And so I'm gonna try an old trick, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop a bolt in here, and not even tighten it, you know, just uh, something to pin it off. And we're going to put one in the opposite corner. And these are drilled uh, for clearance half inch. And that is a cast iron base on that bearing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tap uh, the two opposite holes for 5 eighths. So we're going to take uh, got a 5 eighths uh, through tap. It looks like a starter tap. And uh, square drive, awfully handy sometimes. And we're just going to tap this hole. And those bolts are in there just, and we don't care what happens to this hole because we're going to be, this, this bearing gets discarded. But this is going to get tapped. And then this opposite hole down here is going to get tapped. You're saying, what the hell good does that do? Well, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Let's clear that chip. What the hell good is that? Let's see how we do. Our pin bolts can come out now. Oh, 
And then we can rotate this bearing 45 degrees like this. And I got a couple of bolts here. We're just going to thread them in and push against that housing. And that's going to force that bearing, the bearing's either going to slip off of this end or that end. Either way, we're going to gain the clearance and we're going to be able to get our hooks. We're going to get our meat hooks on that thing. Uh, let me grab an impact. Get a hose going here. And uh, socket. that now we've got room to get in over the jaws and make the pull all right uh, old tricks are the best tricks okay and we've jacked the uh, we jacked the bearing off I put a cap screw here in the end this is a place for me to center up my uh, just so I have a good place to center my uh, uh, three jaw puller um, I now have my three jaw puller converted to a two jaw there's the yoke, and I'm just convert it over to a to a two jaw. So let me get all this put together here, and I think we're ready to make the pull. Just the way I like it. And there's your first bearing. Uh, the other side, we can actually take it out, pop the four bolts out, pull the shaft and bearing at the same time, and we can throw it over in the press and get a press on it. But these things were mated together for so long, they became as one. But we got it off without damaging the shaft. The shaft is clean. Getting it past that corroded spot was difficult. Um, but... Uh, and this guy goes to the drive house to get uh, get a replacement. I don't recognize the brand. I don't see a, a brand on there. Uh, we're going to put Brownings in it. And I know it's dark in there, but it's much more of the same. you got the, uh, the hose uh, right here. And then the four bolts for the bearing housing. And then at that point, the entire shaft's going to come right out at us, uh, bearing and shaft together. And uh, then we have the luxury of sticking it in the press. Okay. Okay, we got our four bolts out, and uh, all that's left to do is uh, yank this long mama Luca out of here. And now we can take this over to the press. We've already got our collar loose here. All we got to do is press the shaft off of the off of the bearings and uh, we're good to go to the bearing house okay well we got it in the press got an ample supply of PB blaster on it I got a press on it right now <clears throat> and I've gone as about as far as I dare go without something exploding so as the wise man once said if it ain't glowing it ain't going so we're gonna put a little heat on this collar uh, with some pressure on it on the press and see if she'll uh, work her way out okay wipe the grease off let's put a little heat on it Gonna 
some pressure on it. pressure and a little bit of heat and she is uh, on the move okay so there you have it uh, a little heat on the subject and uh, she came flying out of there uh, it was pretty violent let's go take a look at that in slow-mo scares me no matter what uh, how many times I've done it must have done it a million times but the shaft she was dead you can see the dry spot right here all the way around to here where the where the penetrating all wasn't getting in there you see the shiny spot over here and you see it's real dry over there and how it was galled and just from years of running in the same spot up in the up in the uh, in the weather up on the roof of the building but uh, I believe we've saved the shaft. We're gonna stick it on the lathe, polish it up, uh, clean it all up and get it ready for bearings. We're gonna check it, measure it, make sure it's not running out or doing anything funny. Uh, we're gonna run down the bearing house. Now here's the two bearings I was telling you about. So the top one's your double row and the bottom one is a single row. This is fan side, this is drive side. So uh, we're gonna go down and get a uh, new bearing. Uh, um, new bearings for it and get that shaft cleaned up and stay tuned for part two we're gonna put this thing back together all right guys uh, thanks for watching